In this video, we provide the solution to question number four for practice exam number three for math 1220, in which case we have a hydrostatic force integral that we have to set up. We do not have to evaluate it, but we do have to set it up. So what's the information we're given? We have a trough that is filled with a liquid of density 840 kilograms per meters cubed. Some things to note here is that this liquid is not water because that is not the density of water. Uh, but the units are also kilograms per meters cubed. That means in order to calculate the weight of this liquid, we are going to have to incorporate the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared, which is left, it's mentioned here as a reminder in case you forgot that. Um, we aren't gonna, we aren't going to be told the length of the trough because when it comes to hydrostatic force problems, it really doesn't matter um, how much water is behind it because of laws of fluid dynamics. Um, and so the, the, this trough has a equilateral uh, triangle on both sides for which each side of the triangle is eight feet long and the vertex is at the bottom. So it's like I have drawn here on the board, on the slide, I should say. Um, it'll be relevant to us in just a moment that I, we're gonna need to know the height of this thing. Let me try that again. Again, my diagram is not a perfect equilateral triangle, but we're gonna be very interested in the height of this thing. Uh, be aware that because this is an equilateral triangle, this altitude, uh, which meets the other side at a right angle, does cut the other side in half so that this distance right here is four. Um, also, since it's an equilateral triangle, each of the angles is 60 degrees for the whole triangle. Um, this is a right angle, like we said, it was an altitude. And by symmetry of equilateral triangles, it cuts this in half. So that 60 degree angle gets bisected into a 30 to two, uh, into two 30 degree angles. And so in particular, this triangle right here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So using some simple trigonometric properties, if this side is four and this side is eight, like you could use the Pythagorean theorem, for example, um, we're gonna see that the other side is four times the square root of three. That'll be useful to us in a little bit. That's, that's about as extensive as the trigonometry is gonna be for us. Now remember, when we do hydrostatic force problems, we're using the fact that force is equal to pressure times area. Uh, the pressure for these problems is always fairly simple. Um, the pressure is going to be these constant numbers. We have this 840 kilograms per meters cubed um, times by the 9.8 meters per second squared. Then we have to multiply that by the depth. Uh, so depending on how we set this thing up, the depth could be a couple different things. The way I like to handle hydrostatic force problems is I'm going to put x, I'm going to call my variable x. I usually just like to call it x, x equals zero. Um, and then I'm going to orient my axis so that x equals zero is at the surface of the liquid. And then I'm going to point it downward so that depth is actually x in that situation. Here's our x-axis. So you observe that depth is just equal to x in this situation. And therefore, our pressure is just going to be this 840 times 9.8 times x. Now, you can actually multiply 840. 140 times 9.8 if you want to, but if you leave it factored, I'm not gonna have any problem with that in this integral whatsoever. So that takes care of the pressure part, then the area, okay? When it comes to area, we look at a typical cross-section at depth x right here. So the distance from the surface downward is x. Uh, the thickness of this is gonna be a small change of x, so that's gonna be a dx. So then what we're left with is the width of this thing. We're gonna call that W for a moment. So the area is equal to W times DX. Uh, putting this all together, we see that the hydrostatic force is gonna be the integral of pressure times depth, uh, excuse me, pressure times area. The, the pressure was this 840 times 9.8 times X. The area was then W times DX like so. We're integrating the respect to X. Do make sure that you have this DX as part of the integral that is necessary for full credit. As we're integrating with respect to X, we then ask ourselves, what is the depth of this thing? Like how, did, how far do we go? We go from the top to the bottom. And so we're gonna integrate from zero to four times the square root of three. So those that bound did come into play there. Um, so this is pretty good. The, the next thing we need to deal with, of course, is the W itself. I mean, you could factor, you can pull the 840 times 9.8 out in front. All right, but we still have to deal with that W here. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna move this down here. I'm gonna pull this out 840 times 9.8 times the integral from zero to, times, uh, to four times root three. You're gonna have that X there. Uh, so what's left here is then that the W, how do you express W? Um, to handle W, we're gonna play around with some similar triangles. If you look at the whole triangle, and actually I don't necessarily wanna do the whole triangle, um, well, no, no, we can, we'll, do, we'll do the whole triangle. You have 
of course, this whole triangle right here, you can cut it in half if you want to look at this triangle, that's fine as well. If you look at the whole triangle, you're going to have that on the top four, excuse me, eight is the whole length, coincides to the height, which is four root three. On the other side, um, the whole length right here coincides with W, so we get W there, and that coincides with its height, its height right here, which notice the whole distance is four root three, this distance is X, so the difference will actually be four root three minus X. So if we solve for W, you'll get W equals, um, well, eight over four root three there, you can cancel, you get two over the square root of three times um, four root three minus X, like so. We're gonna plug that in for W. And so we end up with um, two X over the square root of three times four root three minus x, like so. If you want to distribute that two x over the square root of three through, you can do that. Um, you can multiply these things out too as well, but those won't. none of those things will give you extra points. Um, this, we could argue, is a set up and sufficiently simplified integral that'll measure the hydrostatic force against one side of the, of the one of the triangular sides of this trough.